Okay. How many of you have uh, downloaded an app or software? Okay, well, I think that maybe it's uh, at least 75% of the, of the people. Uh, what I mean is that the, the software market and apps market is huge because I would say that all users of PCs and, and smartphones are potential users of, of, of software because they want to increase the, the, the power of their device, their the computer device. And Softonic, we, in Softonic we try to have these users to, to, get most, uh, to get more from this, from his device or a computer. What is Softonic? Softonic is the number one place uh, to discover and enjoy software worldwide. Apart from this, uh, we are also the number one software download portal in the, in the world. You might know uh, download.com. Yeah, in the UK, I know download.com is, is, is much more known than Softonic. But uh, in terms of global audience, uh, Softonic has surpassed download.com. We are, we are much, much bigger and increasing the gap uh, step by step. What are the main differences between us and our competitors? I would say that Softonic is a, is a media company. We have a team of 60 editors uh, working in 10 different languages, creating content that helps users uh, discover and compare software and enjoy software, giving tips and, tri uh, tips and tricks to, to help them to, to use software in a much better way. So currently now we have uh, 150,000 uh, reviews, 150,000 reviews in 10 different languages and, and 10,000 uh, articles to help users uh, use software in a better way. So Sotonic is also a, it's not only a download portal, it's also a media company. And it's not uh, focused on one platform, it's a multi-platform solution. Sotonic uh, supports all the major platforms, Mac, Windows, um, Android, iPhone, web apps. And until last year, we only had a, a web solution, which is, which is the software download portal. And this year, we have released an, an app for iPhone, and uh, we're going to release an, an app for, for Android to help users uh, discover apps in the, in the Android market and the, in, and the Apple market. And we're going to continue releasing uh, versions, native versions of Softonic uh, for other platforms. Because we, we, have, we have seen that when you release a native solution for, uh, for a platform, a specific platform, the, we are able to engage users in a much better way. OK, what is our position in the market? Uh, currently today, uh, in terms of global audience, Softonic is the number one technology, port technology portal. You might know CNET. CNET has been the number one technology portal uh, for a long time, but not anymore. Softonic is number one in the, in the world. CNET is very strong in, in the English market, but we are very strong in Europe, uh, Latin America, and we will be, and we'll increase our, our strengths in, in Asia and, and the US. So number one technology company, a technology, port, technology portal, and also we are the number, the, the, the number two European company in terms of global audience. There's only one British company which has more audience than, than us on the web, which is a company you might know, BBC. BBC is a, at this moment is the number one company, European company in terms of uh, global audience. Uh, but they are a public company. So that leaves us the number one position in terms of private company. So we are the number one private European company in terms of global audience. Or global audience. OK, and the. Uh, and also, in terms of all the websites available in the world, uh, at this moment, based on sept September, September stats, taking, taking a Google Ad Planner as a reference, Softonic is uh, the, the 45 most visited website in the world. OK, so how have we achieved this? Uh, of course, part of the reason of this success is because of the international expansion. And you can see here the, the evolution of our international expansion. What happened, what happened here is that we were very successful in the Spanish market, and we realized that we had such a great product that uh, 
we needed to, to get it out of the, the Spanish market. We were uh, leaders in Spain and the whole Latin America, and the market was uh, really small, and we had a chance to go international. And that chance, uh, we have really demonstrated that it was worth to, to pursue that, that chance. So we started with the German version in the year 2014, and then the English version, and then you can see the rest of the languages we released uh, in, the, in the chart here. What is different from other companies that you have seen so far uh, is that Softonic is not focused on countries. When we expand internationally, we don't need to support specific countries. We only need to, to support languages, which makes, us, which makes the international expansion much, much, much easier. The last version we have released are the Chinese and the, sorry, the Japanese and the Dutch version. And, and with these 10, 10 languages, uh, we are able to cover the 75% of all the internet. Because these languages uh, suppose 75% of all internet. Okay, what about traffic and users? Uh, well, we are both uh, 100 million users. Uh, actually, 107 million users ha we had uh, on, on September based on Nielsen. And in terms of downloads, because we, we measure our engagement to the users currently now with, with how many transactions we are able to, to, uh, to generate. Because we try to help users, and at the end we want that they download the program, because they, they, they find a solution. And at this moment we are, in September we generated uh, over 100 million downloads. So we're talking about, of course, yearly over, over 1 billion downloads. Okay, so, one thing I like about Softonic is that, you will see later, uh, we are based in Barcelona, but we are able to, to have a multicultural uh, company with uh, 32 different nationalities at this moment. And only a few, well, only a few, I mean, still, Spanish people is, uh, has the majority, but uh, we are more international than Spanish company. Currently now, as you can see, we have 260 employees. Where do we have offices? We have uh, offices in, in Barcelona, where is the, located the world head headquarters. We have Madrid, and we have uh, Tokyo, Shanghai, and San Francisco. Okay, this chart shows uh, the revenue growth that we have achieved in the last uh, six years, and also how, how much we depend on the, on the local market. The, our Spanish, the Spanish market was our first market, and little by little, thanks to the international expansion, we have been able to reduce the share of the revenue that comes from the, Sp from the, Spanish, from the Spanish language. Uh, currently today, uh, on the year, this year, the Spanish language will represent less than 40% of the, of the total revenue, and next year will be less. And what is quite nice to see is that you can see the rest of the languages, they are adding, they are contributing year after year more to the, to the global revenues. And we expect to close the, re the revenues this year at 45 million euros. And this revenue is net revenue. Net revenue, I mean, we are, our business model is based on, on online advertising. So when we invoice, this is 100% margin, margin for us. Okay, I would like to share with you uh, five uh, l lessons that we have learned uh, in this trip to the, uh, with the international expansion. Number one is that um, we had a, a dilemma back in two th uh, 2003. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really sure that, uh, that many of you have, have faced the same dilemma. You have a, a profitable site, Spanish market, uh, where you have room for growth in terms of revenue and profit, and you have the option to invest in other countries. But you know that the investment in other countries, in other languages, will take at least maybe three to four years to pay off. So where do you put resources? It's, uh, it's tricky. So what we did is, in order to make sure that the international expansion was successful, uh, we created a different unit. We, there was one whole team, work, whole team working on the Spanish market, on the Spanish, in order to increase the profit, in order to increase the revenues. And we, there was another different team 
uh, just focusing on, on growing internationally without having to focus on revenues. And after some years, and after seeing that um, this split was successful, we merged the, the units, and now we work as one company. But I think that uh, looking back, there was a very important decision to, to split in, or, in order to not cannibalize each other. Number two, our marketing strategy at this moment mostly is based on search engine optimization. So we, we see that users, when they are looking for software, they will go to Google or, or Bing uh, to search engines, web search engines. So we try to be very well positioned on, on, on search engines. But what we face with, with, the, with the new market that we enter, very competitive markets, is that the, the most trafficked keywords, the most, uh, the, the most popular searches, uh, they were dominated by, by, the, by the leaders in, the, in those markets. So what we thought, okay, maybe there's a chance in the long, term, in the long tail. Uh, so what we did is we optimized the site. We thought of ways on how to get more traffic from uh, the long tail of keywords that are related to, with software. And thanks to this, uh, we have been able to grow, as you have seen before, in, in, in these in this languages quite a lot. So use alternative marketing strategies, because don't try to, to do the same as the competitor. Try different, different things. Number three, uh, we are a Spanish company, but we are, as I said before, we are an international company. We are a global company. As a global company, we understand that uh, we need to hear the voice, we need to get the feedback from all around the world. We have offices in San Francisco and, and Tokyo, and we want to make sure that they are engaged with the company, they are motivated, and we want to make sure that they give us feedback, feedback of what's going on in, in those markets, because it's different than, than, than Europe. So what we did is we, we put them in the management team. Of course, they cannot come to, the, to all the meetings all the time, but I think it's good for them that they, 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 feel, they, feel more, they feel more valuable for the company, uh, they feel more engaged, and we I think the, the, the management team in, the, in Barcelona feels more, uh, more connected to the rest of the world, which is important. Uh, you might have heard that uh, Nokia, for example, all the, man all the management team in, in Nokia was, uh, was local. They had no uh, foreigner in the, in the management team. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they didn't see, they didn't see coming, they didn't see the, the threat from, from Apple. We want to avoid that. Okay, another thing we, we learned is that we are lucky that we are based in Barcelona. Very lucky. I mean, it's a very healthy place to live, very nice place to live. Uh, Kuzman and Wayfield made a survey two years ago and I guess if they do it again, the, the result will be the same. Number, Barcelona is the number one city in Europe in terms of quality of life for employees. So this is one advantage that we have, and we, we really use it, we really use it. What we see is that we have lots of um, people in the European Union willing to, to, to move to Barcelona, and this is really helpful for us. And at the same time, uh, we can we can, uh, we can start, we can launch new languages from Barcelona without having to open a new office in France, or Italy, uh, UK, uh, Germany. Everything that we can do in Barcelona, we will try to do it in Barcelona. So this is very helpful in terms of uh, uh, culture. For in order to manage the company, in order to, to communicate the culture to all the employees, if everything is centralized in Barcelona, it's better. Of course, we cannot centralize uh, China and Japan and US, but whenever possible, try to put all the resources in, in one place because it will be easier to manage and the culture will be easier to communicate. Actually, 95% uh, of all our employees are based in Barcelona. So we are, we are, uh, we are managing eight of, out of 10 languages from Barcelona. The only, the only languages that we need to have a local office to, uh, to manage are the Chinese and the, and the Japanese. In the case of the English, in, in the case of the English uh, language, we have resources in San Francisco and also in Barcelona. 
Okay, and the last, and the last lesson we learn is uh, we, as a media company, uh, content is very important. And, and we didn't translate, we didn't use translation when we moved to, to new, when we, we launched new languages. This, this is with thing was, okay, we have 100,000 reviews of software. Why don't we just translate them? And we can be online much faster. Because the quality won't be that good. So we thought, okay, no, let's keep, let's keep on with the quality that we have achieved uh, with the Spanish side. And, and then let's do the reviews in local language from scratch. Of course, you can, you can use the English review or Spanish review as a reference, but do it from scratch. We don't want a translation. We want a quality content. And this has helped us to get also uh, more traffic from, from Google, because Google likes content, uh, quality content. And, and this is the, the last part of the presentation, and which I think this should be general for all of you uh, that at the end, everything, you can put the strategy, a very nice strategy, and you can define a very good execution plan, but if you don't have the right people, and if you don't retain them, and if you don't attract them, your company will, won't survive in the long term. So thanks to our culture, we have been the uh, best place to work in Spain, best place to work in Spain for three years in a row. And we have uh, surpassed Microsoft, Google, and Cisco in, in Spain. And, and this is what assures us a very long-term growth for Subtonic. Questions? Okay, thanks.